a great day today. Um, I just stopped by to encourage someone. I know this message is for someone. And uh, sometimes you have to take time to encourage yourself. The weight of everyday stress, going to work or dealing with people on a regular basis can wear you down. And you just have to stop and you have to remind yourself who you are and whose you are. So I just want to stop by just like I had to do for myself today. I want to stop by and encourage someone. Uh, it's not just a day. I do it quite often, and, and I think we all should. But at some point in time, we have to get next. We have to get next. We have to stop doubting ourselves. We have to stop doubting God, and we have to get next. And so what do I mean by that? There are times when I get upset with myself. Um, I'll spend time in the Word. Something, some incident may have happened with someone or, you know, just anything happened. And I'll get a little down just a little bit and I'll get frustrated. I know I have shaken the things off that happened earlier or the day before and I've taken time to get in God's word. And all of a sudden, when I get around certain people, it seems like I would slip back or those certain feelings arise that I don't like. Now, sometimes <laughs> when I get around people who we might consider are veterans in the field of what we do, might consider them to be uh, less, maybe um, smarter or more experienced in something we do uh, or something I do, sometimes I'll fold. And the reason why I fold is because they may say or do something that I want to properly respond to, but I want to please God in everything I do. And sometimes the response that comes to my mind is not so godly. Now, it's not even about cursing anybody out or anything like that. It's just that I never want to ruin my witness because I don't know who's watching me. And just through the years in the different things I've done in education and in, you know, running businesses, somebody is always watching. And it's not always the word of God that you preach that wins souls. It's sometimes the word that you live that wins souls. So with that being said, I know that sometimes, in other words, I guess what I'm saying it may seem like seem like I get the strength, and I know I do, I get the strength from reading God's word, and I get the courage when I'm by myself in reading God's word. But when I get around these folks, it's like, okay, Lord, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to say this, but they need to be told, or I need them off my back. And 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 I do understand praying. Prayer works. But there are sometimes there are conversations that need to be had with people. And I like to just have a conversation and be done. I, I consider myself a person with tough skin. I don't like questioning what God has called me to. And I don't like questioning who he made me. And so that makes me upset also. And I'm upset with myself. I'm not necessarily upset with the people. But I'm upset with myself because I say, I'm not going there today. I'm not going to let them take me there today. My thoughts are going to be lined up with the word of God. And then it's like I'm hit from the enemy with a one-two punch. But how you, how many of us know that the word of God cancels all that out? It's still not something that's easy and it's still something I deal with. So I get the strength just from knowing who I am and whose I am. I get strength from knowing of uh, who he's called me to be, what he's called me to, and the gifts that he put in me. But I will say there are times where I don't feel like I'm good enough. And I will say there are times where I feel like um, I may not be what God has called me to be when I'm around certain people. And I have made up in my mind that we're going to combat those times because the word of God is not a lie. And I know I hear the voice of God and I know the voice of a stranger. I will not follow. So I have to take a step back. Have you ever seen a cartoon or a show where you have a competition going on? And uh, it, it may be that the people who lost are cheering harder than the people that won 
or you have people in the stands that are cheering or doing that slow cat clap and then it gets faster for the team that lost and it just seems crazy well, let me tell you about a show. I don't know if you've ever seen it. And I can tell you more about kid shows than I can tell you about adult shows. But there's this silly cartoon called We Bear Bear. Now, We Bear Bears are bears that are bare, you know. So they, they don't wear clothes, but bears don't wear clothes anyway. So it's nothing that's vulgar or inappropriate. But these bears are so silly. They were on the basketball. They were in the park. And there was a basketball court. And they're taking off their gear. And they're saying, hey, we got next. So you think about them saying we got next in their confidence that these bears are going to get on the court and they're going to dominate. These silly bears, we bear bears, these is three of them. These three silly bears were playing basketball and they were playing against some people. Now, bears were bears. The people were human beings that were experienced. They were running circles around these bears. But these bears were having a good time on the court. The bear did a pick and roll. They said, okay, pick and roll. And what they did is they leaned up against the human being and slid to the ground. And they started rolling. Just silly. And you can catch this clip on YouTube. It's We Bear Bears, Our Stuff, Clip 1. You got to see it. We Bear, B-A-R-E, Bears, B-E-A-R-S. But anyway, they kept trying on the court. Now, they were just doing moves, and they kept trying. They were not intimidated about by these people who knew how to play ball. They were trying. They were having a blast on the court. They were doing calling traditional plays and moves, but they were doing things in an untraditional way. At the end, towards the end of the game, the end of the scene, I'll say, it really wasn't a game. The Bears started even doing more tricks, tricks, and they bumped the basketball some kind of way. One of the silly things they were doing, it hit the rim and it went in. They cheered like crazy. They were all over the place. They were doing the happy dance. They were acting a fool, if you will, because they scored one basket. Now, these bears celebrate. You, you would have thought, if you caught it on the tail end, you would have thought they won the game. The other team looked at the bears, and they said, aren't we still up by 20? Those other bears didn't pay attention. What I got out of this clip was not even the moral of the story. Okay? It wasn't even the moral of the episode. The other team was up by 20, but the bears were so confident in the crazy stuff they were doing, they didn't care. They had not scored the whole game. They celebrated over the one basket they got. And that makes the opposing team upset when you celebrate like that. The things I want to pull out of here is number one, the bear stepped up to the plate and said, we got next. Regardless of the skill set up here, they were ready, and they said, we got next. They were so confident that they were going to win something. The second thing is, they played their hearts out. They called bogus plays that <laughs> and did heard of moves in an unheard of way. You've got to see this episode. They, number three, they celebrated the small thing. They scored during the game. They didn't focus on what they didn't do. They focused on what they did do. They didn't focus on the things they did wrong. They focused on the things they did right. The fourth thing is, they left the opposition dumbfounded. The other players could not figure out why they were celebrating. See, you see, we're God's children. We have to step up and carry our cross. We have to tell God we got next. We can't sit back and depend on our own flesh and can be confident, can be confident in our own selves. That, that can't happen. We have to step up and say we got next, trusting in God. Apart from him, we can do nothing. We're nothing. 
The second thing is we have to meditate on and be witnesses to God's word. We have to meditate in that word. We have to be witnesses by thought, by word, and by deed. Our life depends on it. You know how we say things, you better do that like your life depends on it? Our life does depend on it. Now, although we're not perfect, we have to depend on God for the plays to run. He may call for a traditional play to be executed in an untraditional way. And we have to be ready for that. The third thing is we have to celebrate. No matter how big or how small things seem, we have to celebrate. We have to give God the praise. That's how we celebrate. In the end, those who are in Christ, they always win. So we have to celebrate. No matter how big or small, we have to give him praise. We have to celebrate. We have to stop allowing people to determine our worth. And just about everybody does this at some point in time. So it's not just about me. It's about all of us. We have to stop being under the influence of fear and intimidation. When we know we are a lion, then guess what? No one can train us and summon us to sit and roll over like dogs. When we know we are a lion, no one can summon us to sit and roll over like we're dogs. We have to know who we are. We have to shut the influence down that's negative. We have to renew our minds through the studying of God's word. We can choose our thoughts. We have to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. We can think things on purpose. We can force our thoughts to be on God. There are times where I am weak, but I know in him I'm made strong. And I want to leave you with a few scriptures because I, I just stopped by to encourage you real quick. The first thing is 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so the power of Christ may rest upon me. The second one is Mark 440. He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? The third scripture I want to leave with you is Hebrews 4.16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help, grace to help in time of need. The fourth one I want to leave you with is Romans 12.2. Don't be conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will the fifth scripture i want to leave you with is colossians 3 2 set your mind on things above not on earthly things and the last scripture i want to leave you with ephesians 2 10 for we are his workmanship creating christ jesus for good works which god prepared prepared beforehand that we should walk in them it's time for us to step up to the court of life and say to God and let him know we got next. It's time for us to play with confidence, meditate on God's word, and be witnesses. And three, it's time for us to celebrate and praise God for everything. This message has helped someone. I know it has helped me. Share this message with someone and you have a great day. Make sure that you get next.